Palestinians have packed into areas along Gaza's border with Egypt and the southern Mediterranean coastline, where shelters and tent camps are overflowing. Details from VOA's Tommy McNeil. The UN Humanitarian Office says the scale and intensity of ground operations and fighting between Israeli forces and Palestinian armed groups and their devastating impact continues to impede aid deliveries. The Israeli military's air and ground offensive against Hamas has widened to most of the territory. Israel says it is striking militant targets, though homes full of people are regularly crushed. Israeli forces bombarded cities, towns, and refugee camps across Gaza overnight and into Thursday, killing dozens of people. Tommy McNeil, VOA News. A hard-hit Israeli kibbutz has announced the death of Judith Weinstein, an American-Canadian Israeli woman who had been thought to be held hostage in Gaza. Her death was announced Thursday, six days after her husband, Gad Hagai, who was also declared dead. The 70-year-old Weinstein and 73-year-old Hagai were taken were taking an early morning walk in Kibbutz near Os on October 7th when Hamas militants burst across the border into Israel, killing about 1,200 people and kidnapping 240 others. The Kibbutz says it learned that Weinstein was killed on October 7th and her body is being held in Gaza. Mexican immigration officials are clearing out a migrant camp on the banks of the Rio Grande. The operation across from Brownsville, Texas, continued this week as U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Mexican President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador in Mexico City. Mexico's president said the meeting focused on reopening border crossings temporarily closed by the U.S., which wants Mexico to do more to stop migrants hopping freight cars, buses, and trucks to the border. For additional stories 24 hours a day, visit our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. Foreign Minister, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov slammed Thursday the creation of a peaceful formula advocated by Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. VOA's Kim Lewis has more. Speaking during an interview with the RIA state news agency, Lavrov said the plan proposed by Zelensky to end the fighting in Ukraine was a, quote, a figment of a sick imagination, unquote. Lavrov said the G7 members and other countries met recently to discuss the formula following previous meetings in Copenhagen ahead of the peace summit anticipated next year. He claimed the participants were forced to sign on to Zelensky's formula. Kim Lewis, VOA News. Belarus's authoritarian leader has attended a meeting with children from Russia-controlled areas of Ukraine, openly defying an international outrage over his country's involvement in Moscow's deportation of Ukrainian children. President Alexander Lukashenko spoke during a meeting on Thursday, marking the arrival of a new group of Ukrainian children ahead of the ha New Year holiday. He vowed to, quote, bring them to our home and, quote, make their childhood happier. The Belarusian opposition has urged the International Criminal Court to hold Belarusian officials accountable for their involvement in the illegal transfer of Ukrainian children. Houses were damaged, trains were canceled, and thousands of people were left without power across Scotland and parts of northern England Thursday amid a storm that brought heavy winds, rain, and snow. AP correspondent Karen Shamus reports. Storm Gerrit, named after former Dutch weatherman Gerrit Hiemstra, wreaked havoc in Scotland, Wales, Birmingham, Bristol, and Yorkshire, among other locations. Felling trees, snarling traffic, suspending train services, and bringing down power lines. Police in Manchester and northwest England said they received numerous reports of homes damaged by a brief localised tornado. President Dominic Halpin described his experience. So I was just sat on the bed and I heard this noise, this rumble. It just got louder and louder. And it was literally just 30 seconds of mayhem. Heathrow Airport cancelled 18 flights on Wednesday because of air traffic control restrictions. Karen Chamas, London. Zambian anti-corruption authorities say they will investigate after a video on social media allegedly showed the foreign minister receiving piles of cash from a Chinese businessman. Stanley Kukubo resigned but denied wrongdoing and said he had stepped down because he didn't want the issue to be a distraction for the government. He didn't deny he was in the video but said there had been, quote, malicious claims over a business transaction between my private family, business, and our business partner. Kakubo has been accused of receiving $200,000 and a Mercedes-Benz in the deal.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.